60,000 Anki cards? That's how you guys are studying for boards? Give me a break. Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Michael. I'm a second year medical student. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over a very simple way of studying for your board exams. Now, if you're anything like me and you're beginning to prepare to study for your board exams, you probably have no clue on what exactly you need to do, what resources to use, and how to go about the entire process of studying for step one or complex one, whatever exam you're taking, maybe you're taking both. So in this video, I hope to kind of clear everything up for you guys and make it very simple and stress-free in order for you guys to get the most out of your studying for your board exams. So the very first thing that you guys need to start doing and start implementing into your study for board exams is to do practice questions. There's no other way to properly prepare for taking a seven to eight hour exam than by practicing what you're actually gonna be doing on test day. And it's been shown that the more practice questions that you guys do, the better you're gonna do on your board exam. So it's imperative that you guys do as many practice questions as possible. So how many practice questions are we really talking about here? And I found online that the average student does right around 4,000 practice questions before taking step one or complex one. And if you guys want to do even better, then you need to do upwards to six to 8,000 practice questions before you take these exams. Now that might seem like a very daunting task, but it's nothing compared to doing all 60,000 Anki cards for step one, which honestly guys, if you're an Anki person, go ahead and use Anki. But me personally, I am not an Anki person. I never have been. I do like flashcards, but I think Anki is a little overkill. And for your boards, you really need to start applying the concepts and not just memorizing facts. And that's why doing practice questions are gonna help prepare you guys to do much better on the exam than just doing flashcards. And so if you guys are planning on trying to do upwards to 6,000 practice questions before your test date, that may seem daunting, but if you really just break it down to every single day, how many questions do I need? It comes down to about 33 to 34 questions every single day. Now, that may even seem like not very doable because all of us are doing our medical school classes. We still have to take our exams for those classes. We still have to study for those classes. And ultimately, we have to pass those classes in order for us to actually take our board exams. So, how are you going to balance doing 30 plus questions a day plus doing well in your med school classes? And so what I've started to do personally is do 20 questions a day during the week, so Monday through Friday, and on the weekends I'll do 40 questions on Saturday and 40 questions on Sunday. And so if you guys follow kind of what I'm doing, you'll notice that that's not quite 6,000 questions. It's right around 4,300 questions. So where are the other 1,700 questions gonna come from? Well, those are gonna come from doing a little bit of extra questions on some of my lighter days, but I'm also gonna be taking practice exams. So I plan on doing probably one half length exam every single month. And then as I get closer to my test date, I'll start making those full length practice exams. Now you can certainly buy practice exams, or you can just use question banks and make your own practice exams. It's all the same. All you want to do is get as many questions under your belt before going into exam day. So up to this point, if I'm not making myself clear, you need to do practice questions. You need to see what the exam writers are going to be asking you on test day. You need to figure out what you know, and more importantly, what you don't know. That's the whole idea behind doing practice questions, is seeing what you actually do not know and what you need to focus your studying on. So we've talked about taking practice questions. That's super clear up to this point. So what do you do when you miss a bunch of practice questions at the beginning? So say your first three months of studying, you're missing like 70 to maybe even 80% of these questions, which is not abnormal whatsoever. So what you're gonna do with most of the questions that you get wrong is you're gonna figure out why you chose that answer and why the correct answer is correct. Once you guys figure that out, I want you guys to make a Google Doc or just a Word Doc, and I want you guys to start jotting down notes on there of things that are high yield that you continuously miss. And so if you guys notice that you keep missing like your anticoagulant drugs, then you need to start putting those on the Word doc and you need to put their mechanism of action or what they're specifically used for. 
And then you need to go over that doc every day or every other day. So those things become strengths for you. The next thing you need to do when you're missing questions is you need to go into the first aid book and you need to look up what you're missing and you need to read all about that certain topic until it just sticks. First aid is gonna be a great resource for you guys to look up answers, to look up topics that you guys just aren't familiar with, look up drugs and different pathologies and stuff like that. But what I would caution you guys on is do not read first aid from front to back. It is not a novel. It is not a book that you want to just start at the beginning and read through. What you wanna use first aid for is looking up the answers to these questions that you're getting wrong on your practice questions and practice exams. You wanna almost use it as like a dictionary. So if you don't know the definition of a word, you look it up in a dictionary. If you don't know the mechanism of action of a certain drug, you look it up in first aid. If you don't know what type of cancer this is, you look it up in first aid. And then from there, you jot down notes on your Word doc that you're gonna look over every day or every other day or every two days. Now, there are some other really high yield resources that I would recommend using. Um, and these resources are absolutely phenomenal. And I will mention some other resources that you can utilize if you so choose to but I don't really recommend them, I guess. And it's not that like they're bad resources. I just think that these resources that I'm gonna mention right now are much better and they're gonna be much more useful to you guys. So first off, where are you gonna get your practice questions? Number one, Amboss. Amboss is gonna be great to help you guys start your studying off because they're difficult questions. They incorporate a lot of different high yield concepts into one question, which is gonna make you guys have to look up several different concepts per question, which is gonna be great when you first start studying because honestly guys, you guys aren't gonna remember what you learned first year in medical school and probably not even what you learned first semester of second year. So these questions are gonna be great for building up that knowledge content. The second QBank that is the best QBank out there and it's the most realistic to what you're gonna see on exam day is UWorld. UWorld is great. It has like 3,600 questions on it right now. And I think Amboss is very similar in that. I think it has right around 3,000 to 3,600 as well. So between those two QBanks, that's all you're really gonna need to be prepared for your step one exam or your complex exam. Now the resources that you're gonna wanna use to look up the stuff and study the stuff that you guys don't know from the wrong questions that you do on these QBanks are one, first aid. You need to have a first aid book because that is literally what you're being tested on. That is your blueprint to step one, to complex one, you need to know that stuff that is in the first aid book. The next resource is Pathoma. Pathology is the largest section that you're gonna see on step one. So, so I think step one consists of like 40 to 45% of pathology. So just like when you're taking the MCAT, the big chunk of the MCAT is biochemistry. On step one, the big chunk is pathology. So Pathoma is a great resource. There are videos and there's a book that goes with those videos. I highly recommend getting those. And you can even use those as a first and second year student to study for your actual classes because these videos really simplify these complex disorders and diseases. The next resource I highly recommend is on YouTube. It's called Dirty Medicine. And it is honestly so clear, guys. Like, he goes through the highest yield topics that show up on these board exams in such an easy to learn way. If you don't watch the Dirty Medicine videos, I just like don't know how you're gonna get through some of these harder topics because he really does simplify them for you. So look up the YouTube channel, Dirty Medicine. It's gonna be great to learn drugs, to learn pathology to learn biochem, basically to learn everything that's gonna show up on your board exams. He's gonna give you great mnemonics to remember these complex diseases. I mean, it's just honestly a godsend. So go look up Dirty Medicine, and that is resource number three. The last high yield resource that I want you guys to use is also on YouTube. It is the YouTube channel Randy Neal MD. 
This guy is awesome. He is very similar to Dirty Medicine and in fact, they really complement each other. And the reason I found Randy Neal MD on YouTube is because I was needing help with the biostats um, portion of my board studying. And guys, he makes this so easy. Like, you probably won't miss a biostats question if you just watch his videos. But he also goes into a lot of the other high yield topics that are going to show up on your board exams. So just to recap the high yield resources that you should use for your board studying is Amboss, UWorld, Pathoma, First Aid, Dirty Medicine, and Randy Neal MD. It's a lot, I know. Six high yield resources. These things are going to cover all of your bases and you guys are going to get the practice that you need with the practice questions and you're gonna have all of these other resources to help you along the way to learn the different topics that are gonna show up on your board exams. They're gonna give you guys tips and tricks and mnemonics and all of the little details and things that you guys are gonna to need to know to help you dissect these complex um, questions that will show up on your board exams. Now there are other resources that you can use like Sketchy, um, Picmonic, Osmosis, um, boards and beyond. I mean, there's a ton of resources out there, but the six that I mentioned to you guys, I honestly think that's all you need. I think if you use anything else, it's kind of wasted, um, especially the money aspect because all of these resources are super expensive. Um, but luckily the ones I gave you, two of them are on YouTube. So those are completely free. And I honestly think they're much better than these other resources that I just mentioned. Um, Pathoma is really cheap. Amboss and UWorld, depending on your med school, they might actually have that purchased for you guys. So I know at my med school, they purchased UWorld for us. So all I had to purchase was the Amboss questions and Pathoma, and I think that's it. So my study strategy is very affordable and it's really all you guys are gonna really need to do well on your board exams. Now, if you're a DO medical student like I am, you also have to take Comlex 1 which these resources aren't really going to help you learn your OMM type of stuff. So if you guys want me to make a video on resources or how to study for your Comlex 1, then drop me a comment down below. But I hope you guys found this video super easy to understand, super useful, super helpful. Um, I know that if you guys just use these resources, you're going to be a lot less stressed. But make sure to just be consistent with doing your questions every single day. Um, try and do 15 to 20 questions starting out and then just kind of ramp it up as you guys get closer to your test date. And so with that being said, guys, I will see you guys in my next video.